All right, next question. Um, okay, in podcast number seven, you answered a question which was essentially about how a subordinate might cope with a leader who wasn't competent. Mm-hmm. Um, so this this person is interested in your thoughts on the opposite side of the coin. For example, if you're that guy, quote unquote, mm-hmm. and you know it, how can you still lead a team effectively given the lack of competence um, given the lack of competence can undermine the team's trust and, and confidence in you. So, so this question is, you are that guy. Yeah. You're the guy that doesn't have the knowledge. You're the guy that's inexperienced. You're the guy that just got hired. That's good that he, you know it. That's good. Right. Yes. That he good, said he, he, he he's done a good job by, by recognizing that's, yeah. that is step number one. He's recognized that he's the guy that he's inexperienced, doesn't have the knowledge, et cetera. So this, this question, while it might seem like a, tough question it's actually easier than you might think because competence and knowledge definitely are very beneficial for leadership the the knowledge piece and and knowing the technical side of what you're trying to lead a team in but it is definitely not mandatory now if you don't have it of course you should strive to get it because it will make you a better leader but in certain situations there's times where you have to lead and you have to lead now that does happen. So what do you do and how do you lead when you're in that situation? And it's actually pretty easy. You lead almost the exact same way that you would in any other situation. Humbly and with an open mind. So leadership is the same regardless of what you know. Mm. Think about it. Leadership is the same regardless of what you know. What you're going to do is you're going to gather ideas because you don't really have any of your own. So you're going to gather them from the other people, right? You're going to explore the different methods, right? Because you don't know any of the other methods. So you're just going to explore and say, oh, how would you do it? Oh, how would you do it? Mm-hmm. Um, you're going to weigh the different courses of action because you're not sure which one is going to be the best. It's not going to be super evident which course of action is going to be the best. You're going to listen. Listen to what people are saying. Mm. You're going to keep an open mind and hear what they're saying. You're going to show that you're a quick learner and you're going to listen and and learn. And how do you show that you're a quick learner? You show that you're a quick learner by being a quick learner. Mm -hmm. And how do you be a quick learner? By studying. So when it comes, when there's stuff that you should know, then you study it and you learn it and you prove. And then you take all this information that you've got and you weigh the decision and then you make one. And again, that's how you should be leading anyways, right? So, so let me ask you this. Just because you know the most, right? If you are the most knowledgeable on the team, does that mean you're going to plan everything yourself? No. No, it doesn't. Does that mean you're going to make your decisions in a vacuum by yourself? Just mm-hmm. no. If you're a good leader, you're not going to do that at all. Does it mean you're going to make decisions and move forward without consulting with people? No, it doesn't. Mm-hmm. So all this means is that you're going to do all those things. You are going to get consensus from the group. You're going to get people on board. You're going to talk to them and see what their their ideas are. And again, I I shouldn't have used the word consensus because you can't always lead by consensus. That can can become difficult. But you're going to listen. You're going to learn. You're going to talk to people about what you're doing. And that's how you're going to lead. Again, it's almost the exact same. The only thing that gets added if you are sort of a technical expertise, you can be a little bit more of a sanity check on, you know, let's say a plan that people are coming up with. Mm. If, if, if we were doing a computer, you know, software engineering problem, Mm -hmm. I I would not be able to add my technical expertise. But if, you know, four of the the engineers came to me and presented what their ideas were, I'd be able to look at them logically and say, okay, explain to me out and ask enough questions until I said, okay, guys, here's what I'm thinking. I I think we should go with, you know, method B or whatever. Mm. And the other people can kind of counter and then eventually we can make that decision happen. So if I had the knowledge myself, then I could make that decision a little bit easier and I could add a little bit of a sanity check, but it's not life and death. Mm. Uh, And the other thing that's interesting is when you do have the knowledge yourself, you can, you can actually come off as a know-it-all, which is not a good leader. So, In both cases, whether you are the technical expert or whether you're not, the leadership principles stay the same. Be humble, be open-minded, listen, learn, and
and lead.